M S W Media. Big shout out today to Helix Sleep. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash daily beans and use code Helix Partner. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Monday, August 7th, 2023. We have a very special Daily Beans for you today. I get to speak to the Colorado Secretary of State. She's incredible. Her name is Jenna Griswold. I had an amazing time speaking with her. She's absolutely a dynamo, just somebody who's making differences in our world and in our democracy. I hope you enjoy this interview. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Truly honored to be joined today by Colorado Secretary of State and Chair of the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State, Jenna Griswold. Hi, Jenna. Hi, thank you for having me. Madam Secretary, it's so good to speak to you. I I have to tell you, you know, I've talked to so many secretaries of state. It is one of the most difficult, coolest, most rewarding and also thankless jobs that I can think of in the federal government. It's so much hard work. So I really appreciate you taking time out to speak with us today. And I really appreciate all you do. Oh, well, thank you. I want to kick this off by talking a little bit about the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State. I know a lot of people are familiar with the Attorneys General Association and some of the other associations, but talk about, you know, the the being the chair of that. What is some of the work? What are some of the things that you all focus on, particularly now and coming up to the 2024 election? Well, our our main focus is helping save American democracy. And I, I think we have been key to that. So I became chair of DAS, the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State, on the eve of the insurrection. And suddenly, big lie election deniers were running for secretary of state to oversee the nation's elections in every battleground state where there was a race last cycle. And I I became chair of this association that had zero full-time staff and the most ever raised was short of $2 million per cycle. And we really saw the association as a vehicle to, you know, perform, stop these guys. Like, imagine if you have election deniers, people who are telling you they do not believe in the free and fair right to vote, free and fair elections, overseeing battleground states going into the presidential. Um, That's, you know, if it's not the end of democracy, it's a a really good step in, in that direction. Anyhow, long and short, um, we staffed up. uh, DAS had eight uh, eight staffers. We raised uh, about thirty two million dollars and we stopped election deniers from becoming secretary of state in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, New Mexico, Arizona and Nevada. So uh, that was just last cycle. Um, I I do think we helped save American democracy and we're gearing up to, to continue that good work this cycle. Yeah. And so important, particularly in some of those battleground and swing states that you were talking about, where in 2020, they simply wanted to, you know, just install fraudulent electors and yeah. uh, kind of just bas- basically overturn the will of the people. And they do it. They have so many ways of doing it. We see people getting rid of drop boxes, lowering the number of polling places, uh, making it more difficult to vote. You can't hand out water. Aside from legislation itself, there's so many things that a secretary of state can do to either promote democracy and increase access to the ballot box or stymie it and and threaten voters. Talk a little bit about some of the legislation and executive action that you have undertaken in your own state to expand voter rights. Absolutely. So I'm going, I'm in my fifth year. I just won re-election. I was the first, the first Democrat elected secretary of state in 60 years. I was sworn in at the age of 34. I'm 38 now, and it's been just a whirlwind. And over the last almost five years, four and a half years, we've increased drop boxes by 65% in Colorado. Uh, We added more voting centers. I've partnered with the tribes to reverse the the historical voter suppression and actually focus on uh, enfranchisement. And we've seen about a 20% increase in tribal voting. 
We passed automatic voter registration, uh, parolee <laughs> reenfranchisement, the first, oh my gosh, the, the list goes on and on and on. Increased our security. Um, so some of it was through legislation where, you know, I, I propose a package of legislation every year, but some of the innovation was just through executive authority. So for example, in, in 2020, uh, we started ballot tracking. So Coloradans can see when their mail ballots were sent to when they were received. That was a, a use of executive authority. And it mattered. When you have a sitting president of the United States lying about mail ballots, it's really good to add that transparency to show Coloradans, no, everything's fine. You can see when it's mailed. You can see when it's counted. We launched something called Text Secure, where people can use their smartphones to fix their signatures on mail ballots. So we, we've, I, I've really done both in the state of Colorado. Um, we've seen uh, other secretaries do the same. For example, when Governor Hobbs was just lowly Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs, saving democracy <laughs> through executive authority, she launched a, a version of automatic voter registration in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now uh, Adrian Fontes is yep. is doing some in incredible work there. A uh, good friend uh, down in Arizona. I spent third grade to halfway through college in Arizona. So it's kind of like my home away from home. So I'm always very, very interested and, and proud of what they've been able to accomplish. And also looking at at Michigan. Yeah. You know, the the am amazing legislation and things that they've been able to pass. And it always just boggles my mind that it just it seems so obvious to me that making sure everyone can vote, whether that means that you're going to win or not, should be the goal. If if you're in a red state and you expand access to Republicans voting, that is more democratic than trying to restrict the vote in any given county to make the outcome the you know result in in the, the way that you want it to so it just always it just always blows me away that anybody would want to try to make it harder for anybody to vote and so that's why I'm so glad that you're doing the work that you're doing especially with the association and at home but speaking of of Michigan we're going to switch directions here for a, a second because huge indictment announcement of 16 fraudulent electors trying to overturn the will of the voters in that state. Every single elector who signed that certificate in the dark night of a basement when they were kept out of the state house has been investigated and now faces felony charges. And I was wondering what you thought about that, first of all, and if there was any sort of communication within the association about how to maybe do these investigations in other states like Arizona, for example, who just uh, has, I guess, bolstered up or appointed a prosecution team mm -hmm. there, too. Is there any is there any type of uh, discussion around that? Well, I think there's discussion uh, around the, the need to prosecute in general. Um, one of the, the hard things during my tenure is the, the spike of threats, um, the, the spike of, of threats uh, against election workers who, by the way, are predominantly women and the, the absolute disregard we see from uh, former President Trump for women correlates to his absolute disregard for democracy. Um, so I think that the need to prosecute is very pressing at all levels, when it's, whether it's threats against secretaries of state or election workers, um, whether it's uh, against people who tried to steal the American presidency from the American people, they need to be held accountable. And these prosecutions also need to go forward to disincentivize future bad actors because the attempted stealing of elections in the United States is not over. It's not. Uh, so people, if, if they're going to go down that path, they need to, to know that they may be facing felony charges. But one of the big takeaways um, from Dana Nessel's prosecution outside of the, the great need uh, to, to do those types of prosecutions is Frankly, it's another woman stepping up. There are not a, a lot of women elected in the United States at high levels, at statewide office, in the U.S. Senate, in Congress, in governorships, even as prosecutors. And we are overwhelmingly seeing women step up to protect democracy. That doesn't mean men aren't doing a good job, too, but it's disproportionately women. And you know, that's probably a, a longer conversation, um, whether it's just <laughs> that built in grit you have to have to be in these statewide offices in the United States with gender issues, how they are. 
Um, I, I'm not sure what it is, but that's one another thought. And Dana's tough as nails. And I'll tell you what, once you start um, going after these bad actors, they start coming after you. So you need to be really tough. So I think overall, it's it's a, a really good thing for democracy. And, and I, I was not surprised um, to, to see her uh, just knowing what the little I, I do about her. Um, take that step. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've long said when I first started my original podcast about the Mueller investigation, it was three women. Uh, now I have a women run network. Uh, and I, I've long said that I feel like women have a different sense of justice yeah. than men and not better or worse, just a different sense of what justice truly means, because we tend to have to find justice uh, in different ways, as you may well know, and not to get too gender role here. But, you know, I don't have kids. So democracy is like my baby. Like I'm a mama bear to democracy and people's yeah. votes and their rights. So yeah. maybe it's some sort of a, I don't know, innate nurturing thing for me. But it is a conversation for another day. And again, yeah. that's I know that that seems like a, a, a gender role type situation. I don't want to, you know, make it seem like that that's something that not every person can do. But for me, that's how that's personally I can attest to that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the bills now uh, that are trying to work their way through Congress. We've got some competing bills on voter access or, you know, voter suppression, (laughs) depending on how you want to put it. Wondering how and if the association or you uh, work with the Department of Justice to 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 shine a light on some injustices perhaps happening in states. I know that like they're trying to they're trying to make it so that a poll watcher can follow you around and be within two feet of you and you know, whatever. And that, and that just seems like, like it's anti-constitutional, like it's unconstitutional to, to intimidate voters in, in a, in a physical way. I mean, they had for so long forsaken the physical voter intimidation thing. And we saw it come back with a vengeance with Donald yeah. Trump. We saw it in Arizona with those poll the uh, drop box watchers or whatever. And, and now it's, it's coming back. And so what sort of things, and that's just one example, but what sort of things, how do you work with the feds to be like, Hey, can you come down here and help us with the voting rights act and the constitution yeah. and stuff like that? Well, th- there's different layers of, of what it means to, to work with the federal government. Um, I, I would say a, a couple of things to that question. So both parties now have put forth um, their version of, of voting rights reform. And I think it's um, unfortunately a, a good snapshot on, on where the parties are. The American Confidence in Elections Act proposed by House Republicans is already raising concerns over restricting access to the ballot, especially for voters of color. Uh, they're using Georgia's big voter suppression package. Um, Georgia saw the lines in 2020, uh, 10 hour long lines and said, we could do even worse or better, depending on on what your point of view is. And so they decided to pass further voter suppression, largely targeting uh, people of color in Atlanta. We'll see how long the lines are, but it's it's ridiculous. Imagine you wake up as an elected official. Oh, those lines weren't quite long enough. People should, you know, at least stand for 16 hours. So we're seeing the Republicans uh, in Congress propose voter suppression. Um, We're seeing that the Democrats continue to propose uh, the Freedom to Vote Act, which many Democratic secretaries of state worked on. Um, It's the, 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 in a large part, the best options from many of our states. Um, But but not to be a a, a Debbie Downer, neither of those bills are going to pass. They're not. And so I, I think it's, so sad. I don't even just heartbreaking that the American people cannot expect the U.S. Congress to uphold democracy and their freedom to vote. They can't. Um, so the fight has largely been in the states. That that doesn't mean we, we don't work with the federal government. We work with an agency of the Department of Homeland Security on securing election infrastructure. Uh, we pushed the DOJ to focus on all the threats in retaliation and intimidation. Uh, they launched a task force on, on threats to election workers. They started to prosecute. Uh, but the Supreme Court just made it much harder to prosecute threats against election workers a couple of weeks ago. But when it comes down to it, you know, you, you mentioned specifically the voter intimidation. Uh, every state where we can pass stronger laws, we need secretaries of state to lean in and, and lead that charge. 
Here in the state of Colorado, in the last several years, um, I led legislation to make it illegal to open carry close to a Dropbox voting center or processing those ballots. So we had that in place prior to the 2022 election. We also made it a crime to retaliate against election workers. And then one of the things that I've had to do is speak very publicly uh, about the threats against me because we were seeing number one, prosecutions not happen, state government not taking it so seriously, uh, which made my job hard to do. But number two, we were starting to hear from women across the state of Colorado that they weren't going to run for office, that they weren't going to run for office because if you know the issues I was facing weren't being addressed, how would the issues they would face as a county commissioner or the state legislator be addressed. So I've also uh, led um, some big legal changes in the state of Colorado about security for statewide office holders and for legislators. Yeah. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about accountability, not just federally, but uh, in, yeah. in the states as well. But I do need to take a quick break. OK, so I want everybody to stick around. We will be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's AG. You know what really sets the tone for my day? A good night's sleep. And thanks to my customized Helix mattress, my sleep is better than ever. Just go to helixsleep.com slash daily beans, take their two minute sleep quiz, and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And you'll get 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Helix Sleep has a vast array of choices with a lineup of 20 unique mattresses, including the award winning Lux and the newly introduced Elite Collection. They even have mattresses for our big and tall friends and for kids. Uh, Helix understands we all have unique sleep patterns and preferences, so they've designed their mattresses accordingly, so everyone gets their perfect sleep solution. My perfect mattress is the Helix Midnight, which is the perfect fit for anyone who sleeps on their side and prefers a medium firm mattress. But how do you choose the right one? Again, just take that Helix sleep quiz, and in less than two minutes, you'll be matched with your perfect sleep companion. Better yet, this comfort arrives at your doorstep with zero delivery charge. You also get a 100-night trial to test your new Helix mattress and an impressive 10 to 15-year warranty. They trust their product, and I trust them. Every Helix mattress is crafted in their own manufacturing facility right here in the USA, ensuring that the quality and comfort we receive are top-notch from their facilities straight to our bedrooms. You will never have to step foot inside a mattress store again. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash dailybeans and use code HELIXPARTNER. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Hey, everybody, welcome back. We're talking to the Colorado Secretary of State and chair of the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State, Jenna Griswold. Jenna, before the break, I wanted to talk a little bit more about accountability. But before we shift over to that, you were mentioning something about how it's really up to the states now because we've we've gutted the Voting Rights Act. The Supreme Court just made it harder to um, to not go after people who threaten election workers. I'm wondering about Wisconsin. We just had an incredible Supreme Court election there. I believe they're going to be able to draw their maps. I believe they're going to be able to balance their state house um, and their their legislature. And we can start looking at fairer and freer elections in Wisconsin. And I was wondering if there's a something going on with the Association of Secretaries of State to to help give best practices to uh, to Wisconsin on how to get get on that road, because I know that the voters there are really looking forward to it. That, that's a great question. So first and foremost, the Wisconsin Secretary of State, who is fabulous, you should look her up if, if you're not familiar with her, um, does not oversee elections. Mm. However, last election, the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State had to inter intervene and, and support the Democratic candidate in Wisconsin, which we were happy to do, because the Republicans were threatening that if they would win that seat, they were going to give the Secretary of State oversight of elections. And we're really worried about what that Secretary of State would do. So DAS has been there. Um, we're so proud that we have a fabulous Secretary of State in Wisconsin. And in terms of sharing best practices, that doesn't really go through DAS. That goes through our individual offices. So Colorado is always there to help any, any state at all, red, blue, in between, in anything that we do really well. Colorado's considered the gold standard of our nation's elections. We have some of the most accessible and secure elections in the nation. We're always on the cutting edge of what's coming. We pride ourselves on that. And in terms of sharing best practices, it has really mattered. Mm -hmm. In 2020, suddenly we're, we're in the pandemic with 
Trump trying to steal the presidency from the presidency. There is a real concern that American voters would not be able to make their voices heard. So what I instructed my office is, number one, we're going to run just like normal. Number two, we're going to open up access as quickly as possible in the state of Colorado. But number three, it is our mission to help any state in the nation and every state, hopefully in the nation, expand access to vote by mail. So we were there um, by the end of 2020. It, it, we had uh, chatted with, consulted with nearly every state in the country. The nation expanded access to mail voting to over 84 percent of American voters and democracy prevailed. My state has it now in California. Yeah, it's yeah. So thank you. <laughs> well, that's a, a really good example. So uh, California went to vote by mail for all and vote centers, which is the Colorado model. And we're there basically to help uh, the, the experiments we've done in Colorado, the best practices. Uh, we our offices are, are talking to each other and then that gets uh, in the legislation. Um, so we just saw a great um, what's it called session uh, explanation from the California Secretary of State uh, to many of the nation's Secretary of State on the rollout of vote centers and, and uh, vote by mail for all. So super excited you all have that now. Uh, me too. Yeah, me, me too. Okay, let's let's shift over to a little bit of accountability and deterrence because, you know, we were talking about election workers a little bit. I know that uh, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss down in Georgia are now uh, in the middle of a, a, a defamation lawsuit against Rudy Giuliani for attacking them, saying that they had a suitcase full of ballots. We now know that the special counsel has subpoenaed State Farm Arena surveillance footage. And, and that might be part of his investigation. We know that the, the district attorney down in Fulton County, Fonnie Willis, is investigating election interference there. And it seems like with this new, you know, January 6th, trying to stop the peaceful transfer of power target letter that the, the former president has gotten, it seems like we're finally in the age of accountability. And I was wondering how the secretaries of state and how you are, are uh, following along with that, responding to it, and how it might be impacting the next election or future elections or how you do the work that you do? I am a big proponent of accountability. Uh, before it became popular, I, I was saying, Donald Trump's trying to steal the elections. Uh, American voters, stop him. States, do everything you can to make sure there's free and fair elections. Um, I, I do think it, it took some of this um, legal accountability work a, a little bit of time to start. I, I personally think it should have happened faster, but I, I'm really glad to see what, what's happening. Um, it's important that bad actors like fake electors get held accountable. It's important that Rudy Giuliani, who tried to mastermind uh, the, the stealing of the presidency, is held accountable. It's important that Trump is held accountable. We are not a, a kingdom where the mighty king gets to do whatever the heck he wants. And I'll tell you what, if we get to that point where people are stealing the presidency and not being held accountable, that's a, a bad future for working people, for women, for people of color, for the LGBTQ community. A strong man president with no accountability means our freedoms are going to be taken away. Accountability is necessary. And in the state of Colorado, you know, I, I had to deal with the first insider threat in the nation. So uh, about a, a year and a half ago or so, it was um, in 2021, Mesa County clerk Tina Peters, working uh, with yes. QAnon and Patrick Byrne, compromised her own voting equipment trying to prove the big lie. So I, I went in, decertified all the voting equipment, uh, partnered with the Republican County commissioners to get her removed from oversight of the elections. And then asked my 2018 Republican opponent, former Secretary of State Wayne Williams, to step in to oversight. We've also uh, worked uh, to provide information, evidence to the Republican district attorney who is prosecuting her. I also think that's really important. People who breach their own voting equipment to try to prove conspiracies should be held accountable. But I'll tell you what has not happened. There was a national, there's very likely a national conspiracy. Patrick Byrne, um, you know, the, the former, uh, uh, the My Pillow guy was involved. The the former supposed overstock leader. Overstock guy, yeah. Uh, overstock, My Pillow, Overstock, QAnon. <laughs> you know, 
They were funding it. They were there. They were on the phone as they were breaching the voting equipment. That lawsuit hasn't been brought. And I think that the rich people who are funding all this chaos because it is being funded also have to be held accountable. Yeah. Although I do know that um, the special counsel, Jack Smith, has been interviewing and and looking into Patrick Byrne. He's now looking at the cyber ninja audit that went down in Arizona. He's he's apparently looking at all of this. And I'm assuming with what we saw come out of Michigan with her referral to the DOJ and then the DOJ saying the electors are yours. And, you know, I I think that there's going to be some uh, more communication about where the accountability belongs and who should be doing it. And I'm hoping that in states where they are unwilling to go after some of these uh, criminals, uh, that perhaps the the feds will step in uh, and do the job for them. But anyway, I do agree with you. I think accountability is super important to deterrence and also and, and voting because there's so many guardrails to democracy. And I think voting is the biggest one of those things. So thank you for protecting it and expanding it. And it's been uh, an honor to talk to you. Uh, Would you let everybody know where they can follow you on social media and get more information about the work that you do? Absolutely. So you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, now on threads, on Twitter. I don't know how long, but we're still on Twitter. (laughs) For now. (laughs) For now. It's Jenna Griswold, Colorado Secretary of State. Um, we really appreciate all your leadership, Allison, and the, the the media for stepping up in this time. So thank you, and thank you to all your listeners. Um, you know, the biggest piece of accountability we didn't talk about, the, the most crucial piece of accountability there is, is the American people. And we are seeing them time and time and time again reject this extremism. We are not fighting a fair fight. There's gerrymandering, money in politics, voter suppression. But we're winning the rounds of stopping these election deniers in really crucial ways. So the biggest accountability is the upcoming elections. Make sure you know what's going on. Make sure people around you, if you're in a state where it's harder to vote, know how to vote and just get out, vote your conscience. Um, And and I'm so confident this nation is going to get through this dark period we've been in. Agreed. Yeah. Ever since the beginning, since the Mueller podcast, I've said we can't rely on one person or one agency to save democracy. It's up to us yep. as well. So there's no magic bullet. Uh, we just have to put in the work. So thank you for putting in the work and uh, hope to have you back on the show soon. Everybody uh, stick around. We'll be right back with the good news. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. Good news, good news. And we are going to need, I'm I'm begging like Trump begged Raffensperger. I'm going to need your good news. We're going to need your good news this week and next week. Uh, it's so please send in any good news stories you have pod, pet, picks, uh, kids, grandkids, whatever you got, send it in dailybeanspod.com. Click on contact. We, we also take corrections and uh, we also accept uh, confessions. And then, of course, if you want to have a dispute settled in Amy's court on Fridays, we can do that too. So that's what we, what we do. Um, you ready for this, Dana? I am. We've got a, some long ones and some good ones. So, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll kick this off with uh, Brian. Pronouns he and him. Hello, Beans crew. Thank you for doing important work. AG, thank you, especially for bringing us these shows. They're consistently amazing. Oh, thank you, Brian. You've helped me over the last four years get through some pretty dark times. Back at you, Brian. The good news is that it's almost over. Trump has done more harm to our democracy and collective spirit than I thought possible four years ago. The Democrats aren't perfect, but at least they're on our side. I look forward to your stories, holding these villains accountable. I want to know Mitch McConnell's dark secret. I want to know about the skeletons in Pompeo's closet. I want to know why these scoundrels sold us out. We will finally, we will find out eventually. And that's the good news. Uh, I have attached a photo uh, and a few photos of our precious pups, Ahab and Sally. Ahab is 16-year-old Jack Russell and Big Sal is a 13-year-old mini schnauzer. They love going for bike rides. 
The last photo is a promo for my local business, E-Bike Cargo. If you ever want to do a segment on sustainable transportation, I would love to help. <gasps> oh, <gasps> very nice, these babies. Look at the little... Oh, look at the schnauzer. Schnauzer party. So cute. That third picture. My goodness, all happy in the sun. Oh, and the palm trees. This looks nice. V-Locker. I love it. It is great. Yeah, those little ba- baskets, those r- really cool, sustainable, awesome, um, secure baskets on the back of your bike to carry stuff around and including tiny ducks. I love it. All right. We got more stuff coming. This is from Kelly, pronouns she and her. Happy New Year to everyone on the Beans team. I was listening to Friday's episode, Trump, Pence, Me Cute, and I had to pull myself off the road when I heard Linda's good news story so I can look up visual snow syndrome. I'm so thankful she wrote in with this good news because I think I may be uh, predisposed to this condition also. I've had migraines since early childhood and I've never had visual auras. I actually sometimes have auras that are partially paralysis, uh, but hey, that's unrelated. I do have serious light sensitivity though. And I, like Linda, also have a cardiologist for other reasons. And last year they had me try a medicine. Let me tell you all, I've never tried acid, but after one dose of that drug, it was like I woke up inside a kaleidoscope. Apparently, this was an extremely severe version of an already rare side effect called luminous phosphines. My doctors were very confused. Everything I know about it, I've learned through my own research. I've honestly been freaked out about it ever since. It took weeks to go away, and I could barely walk from all the moving rainbow lights. I just wanted to reach out and say thank you to Linda, because in the brief time I spent on the side of the road reading about visual snow, I think it would be very helpful for me to bring to my care team. So thankful to UAG for creating this podcast that keeps me updated on the news, has such a wonderful community where this kind of chance blessing can occur. Here's to a wonderful 2021. That's awesome. Kelly, thanks for writing in and thanks for Linda, for you writing in. See, we're all helping each other. This is wonderful. Uh, next up from Jim, pronouns he and him. Good news. As, December, as of December 14th, my wife Jan and I are great grandparents. Our grandson Philip and his partner Yasmin had a boy, Angel Matthew Hernandez. Oh. Baby and mother are healthy and doing well. Angel is Philip's middle name and the baby's middle name is Matthew. Uh, and that's for Philip's late brother, Matthew, who was murdered in 2013 at age nine by their father as he was losing a custody battle with oh our God. daughter after the divorce. Jessica and her boys have lived with us for about three years while her ex was in prison. And I had spent more dad time with those kids than their biological father, taking them to school, helping them with their homework, teaching them how to throw a Frisbee at the park. We'll always miss Maddie, but seeing his name carried on this way feels good. So the birth of Philip's little boy is really good news. A wonderful holiday gift for the family. Interesting. The thought of being a great grandparent doesn't feel weird, but our daughter being grandma is unreal. (laughs) (laughs) I hope you have a safe and have a much better year in 2021. If you're able to start touring again this coming year, come to New Mexico. We'll be there. We should go to Albuquerque. Oh, in a heartbeat. I have the theater all set for us. You would love it. Oh, sweet. Okay, we're coming to Albuquerque. You got that, Jim? Pod pet picks tax attached. Man, that's hard to say. Our three cats, all from the same litter. We were foster failures and adopted them as kittens about eight years ago now instead of just fostering them. The two tabby brothers are Rusty, orange and white, and Mapenzi, tan his his name is swahili for lover boy <laughs> and uh, their torty sister is bolt so named for her habit of instantaneously teleporting through any door left open for a microsecond if we don't want her to go through it her favorite stunt is to escape from the house they're indoor cats they just sit outside the door watching us and waiting for us to come scoop her up and schlep her back inside look at these babies Aww. semper fidelis and take care hoorah so sweet they're beautiful. look at that I want to, I want to, I want to rub the belly. Mm. I want to rub the belly. So sweet. All of them so, so sweet. Oh, I love that story. You know, I think about listening to these stories from the listeners, just like how much life people have lived. Mm. You know, I, I, you know, I think about this all the time because of what I do for a living, AG. And when you were traveling um, with the the show and performing, We meet more people than most normal on average people do. And I just love hearing these stories of people and actually really connecting with it Mm. uh, all over the, all over the world. Anyway, I think it's incredible. Yeah. It's amazing to like, you know, I sometimes sit and think about how complex my life is and how many people I know and all the things that I'm doing. And then I muse about everyone else having 
the same level of complexity in their lives and how expansive they are and that we all live together in this community and on this planet. And it's just, it blows my mind how much, how much information and data and joy and pain and love and everything that is, how, how much is encompassed in just, in just who we are as people. Totally. It's amazing. It's amazing. I love these stories. We have another one. This one's from Anonymous, pronounce he and him. Hello, ladies. Please forgive the length of this submission. There's just no short way to tell the story. I completely understand if you don't want to air this, privately enjoy and just get a good laugh, except for Donald Trump. Names have been changed for obvious reasons. Also, uh uh-huh, I've been a listener since back in the kitchen table, uh, atrocious audio days. (laughs) My goodness. I'm not even sure how I found MSW, but I was stoked when the Daily Bean started and listened to it every day. Now, this is neither good news nor a confession, but it has to do with Donald Trump and dildos. So there has to be good, right? So (laughs) maybe it'll be good on the slow good news day. This happening in September of 2019, so pre-COVID, but it's worth telling. I've thought about sharing it with Beans for a while. Last month, when you mentioned the Hungarian COVID super spreader orgy, I figured it was time. Great. (laughs) Buckle up. (laughs) Here we go, everyone. Uh, I work for a local chapter of an international nonprofit group dedicated to water quality issues relating to equity, conservation, and environmental quality. A couple times a year, we organize eighth graders to do a creek cleanup in our local stream. We provide five Uh, gallon, uh yeah. We provide five gallon buckets, garbage bags, PPE, break them up into groups of five to eight kids accompanied by a teacher, parent, or representative of the nonprofit, and they clean about a mile of stream and stream bank. The kids collect everything they can reasonably and safely pick up. We bring it back to a sorting area where it is separated, weighted, and or counted, glass and aluminum recycled, and the rest goes to the landfill. The kids use the data for their classwork, and the data we collect helps us quantify yearly totals, etc. Now, this creek goes right through the middle of town, a progressive, environmentally aware university town. This is a green belt and concrete path along the creek, and it stays relatively clean. But college kids, transients, tubers, kayakers, swimmers, recreationalists, kooks and weirdos leave their shit everywhere. So there's a lot of crap left over. So the sorting area is near the dumpster in a hotel parking lot. And as things come in, piles develop. Cans and bottles, cigarette butts, shoes, tennis balls, clothes, all manner of flotsam and jetsam uh, start to accumulate. There are always some unusual finds. For each of these events, myself and other staff members keep an eye on what's picked up. And from the the refuse, we um, elevate a holy trinity. It usually consists of the three largest or most unusual finds. It's normally what we call charismatic megaplastics. Um... Example, traffic cones, kids play kitchens, chairs, etc. Now, the group of kids I was working with was three boys and three girls who had sort of self-segregated by gender. We have to understand that kids are kind of all over the place. I'm mostly there to keep them from stepping on nails or picking up stuff we don't want them to like jagged hunks of metal, needles, broken glass, etc. One of the young ladies goes, hey, look at what I found. It's Donald Trump. I didn't immediately walk over to see what she was talking about before I even turned to look that direction. I heard the words that no 54-year-old man working with eighth graders ever wants to hear. Isabella found a vibrator. Ah, (laughs) screak, block, Kelsey, put it down, put it in the bucket. Uh, (laughs) I then did what any normal person would do in this situation. I fucking panicked. I mean, what the fuck was I supposed to do at that point? Is this a hazmat situation? Do they have all their shots? I just can't walk over and tell an eighth grade girl to hand over the vibrator, can I? Do I say anything at all? No, you don't say a fucking word and you pretend it's not happening. (laughs) They'll just put it in a five gallon bucket, right? And when they dump it out on the collection area, I'll just snag it real quick and get to the dumpster, okay? I've got a plan. Now, a few seconds go by, I've collected myself and I'm at a level of benign resignation that my choice just to play it off like it isn't happening. All right. I think to myself, I have this under control. This can't get worse. I glance toward them, but the terrain and vegetation is blocking my view. It's as nonchalant a fashion as I can. I walk in their direction, put the commotion is intensifying. The girls are laughing and screaming and every thread of my being knows this is worse than I thought. Now, as the situation comes into view, I see this isn't a vibrator at all. It's a giant double-ended dildo. One end bigger than the other and probably two feet long. One of the girls is holding a Donald Trump chia pet, bald, devoid of any chia. One of the others is hitting the Donald on the head and jabbing him in the face with the dildo. Then she starts swinging it at her friends. The only... 
The only thing going on my way is that at this point, the boys have not responded to the ruckus. However, <laughs> runners, cyclists, and pedestrians are going past at a pretty good rate, and it's clear I am the adult in charge of these kids. Awkward. So, I decide this has to end now. It has to, or the situation will get infinitely worse than it already is. The potential spectacle caused by 50 other kids encountering the dildo has to be subverted. At this point, I've identified Kelsey as the one wielding the dildo, and I do what I have to, but I do what I've not wanted to do until this point. I acknowledge and sequester the dildo. Heroically, I extend my arms, I open my garbage bag, and I say loudly, stop. I've got their attention. Kelsey! Put the dildo. Fuck. I just said dildo to them. They think it's a vibrator. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Put it in. Put it in the bag. She drops it in a mostly empty garbage bag, which is tall enough to be contacting the path, the bike path below. And it hits the cement with a thud that, if I'm honest, almost makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. Dana makes gag sound. <laughs> okay. Keep calm and carry on. I say as they <laughs> laugh for the obvious. <laughs> okay. Uh, laugh for obvious my mouth's actually watering a little bit okay um (laughs) laugh of obvious not for good reasons obvious metric reasons okay after a few more minutes the kids are ready to empty their buckets so we start heading back to the sorting area along the way i say quietly to the three girls i'm throwing this in the dumpster so as soon as we get back no one's going to see it and that was the last i spoke of it to them one of the boys overheard me and asked what i was talking about (sighs) what are you talking about he asked nothing Isabel found a vibrator. It didn't find a vibrator. You found a, you found a vibrator? It wasn't a vibrator. It was a dildo. She said loud <laughs> enough for anyone within 500 miles to hear. It echoed off into infinity. Dildo, dildo, dildo. <laughs> the walk back consisted of giggling and murmuring about dildos and vibrators, which I ignored. I guess there's some news on that project. The kids picked up almost 1,400 pounds of garbage Glass and aluminum. I'm, I'm sure 1,200 pounds of that was the was double-headed the dildo. dildo. Yeah, that was just my, <laughs> that was the narrator, everybody. On the same stretch of stream that another group had um, picked up 1,600 pounds of garbage six months earlier. Jesus Christ, people, stop leaving so much garbage over there. Uh, when we got back to the sorting area, I did show the other adults the dildo so that if it came up at all, they'd already have a heads up. No pun intended. Regarding the truth of the situation. <laughs> if it came up at all, they'd they, have a heads up. They'd, have, they'd actually have two heads up. <laughs> they'd have a double head up. Okay. Regarding the truth of the situation that all got a good laugh out of the story. There's no pet tax, honey, and you don't have to give us one. There's no pet tax um, is attached, but I am including a picture of a tiny bit of unsorted trash that events Holy Trinity, the two foot long double headed dildo, the bald Donald Chia pet, and appropriately a rotten hard boiled egg. That is the most uh, discuss- straight ladies. I don't know how, if you think this is a pretty appendage, I don't understand. I mean, come on, guys. You cannot look down at that and be like, I got a good looking dick. I mean, some of you probably think, I just can't, AG. You should probably stop me from talking right now. And this just reminds me of, have you seen the movie Parenthood with Steve yeah. Martin? Oh, yes. You know, when he goes looking for the flashlight after the power outage and he turns it on and it just starts buzzing and then the lights come on and he's holding a vibrator and the little girl goes, he just laughs and runs away. And the little girl goes, what was that? And the mom goes, it was an electric ear cleaner. And the little girl goes, it was kind of big. And then grandma goes, it sure was. <laughs> Reminded me of your grandfather, rest uh, his soul. <laughs> now, I actually am trying not to. Um, if you do see the picture of this in the newsletter, it is absolutely disgusting. And maybe just because it's dirty. I mean, obviously, I don't think penises are like, a foul thing. I just, is it because it's dirty, AG? I, 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 as a straight woman, I need to know, or presumably straight, my apologies. What, tell me, tell me your thoughts on this. Here are my problem. There's this uncanny Valley situation happening of it being two ended, right? It's just a, like a (laughs) disembodied two ended penis. And then, and then they tried to make it look realistic. Let's just say that. Yes. Um, and, that Ugh. it's tapered bothers me. That it's tapered bothers One me. One end is smaller than the other. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't, I don't know. What's like for an Irish lady on one end? I don't get it. I mean, listen, I know that because I 
listen, I know that it's not just lesbians using toys. Like straight people use toys, and gay men use toys, and everyone uses toys, but the visuals this puts in my head. I need you to stop the episode. Can we just ask what's good yeah, in the world? We can. We can. <laughs> we can try to end this. Get it? Oh my god. Oh, I need to stop scrolling. I mean, I need to get off this picture. Not off, Thank whatever. <laughs> By the time you hear this, we've got a good turnout in Georgia. <laughs> That's all I have. Oh, shit balls. Can we name it Leffler and Purdue? Can we? <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Those two, the double ended dildo. One end is Leffler. The end is, the other end is Purdue. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. Let's get off this picture. Stop. Good times. Everyone, uh, <clears throat> till tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we just cemented our, uh, ourselves in the history of journalism of a true i think this is a this is pulitzer stuff <laughs> oh, this doesn't win a webby or whatever they're called i have no idea what it takes a podcast yeah. award what and whatever <laughs> what's it even for all right everybody until tomorrow um we'll be watching those results and uh please take care of yourselves take care of each other take care of the planet <laughs> take care of your mental health i've been ag <laughs> and i've been tg Thank you so much to Jenna Griswold for that amazing interview. I'll be back tomorrow with Renato Mariotti, host of the It's Complicated podcast and former federal prosecutor. You don't want to miss it. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q and bring someone with you. I've been AG and them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane, with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the pedal to our metal, the sparks that ignite us, the pistons that push us, the passions that drive us. From the feelings that move us to the places that pull us on the roads that unite us. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care, here to keep you firing on all cylinders. I'm Frances Callier. And I'm Angela V. Shelton. And we're Frangela. You know what you need in your life? Hmm. The Final Word Podcast. Yes, you do. That's right. It is the final word on all things political and pop cultural. Where we make real news real funny. Where we inspire you so you can hashtag resist. Subscribe and get a new episode of The Final Word Podcast each week. It's the news we think you need to hear. That's right. We think you need to hear it. Okay. Yeah, it's what we say, so. That's right. And because all we do is give, every Thursday you can listen to our hysterical podcast, Idiot of the Week. We round up the stupid because you know what? Somebody has to. Okay. All we do is give. Give.